Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for September 8th, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled God is Faithful. I want you to know that. I want you to know that our God is faithful. He made plans for you from the foundations of the world, and he is dedicated to those plans. He's more dedicated to those plans than you're dedicated to those plans. God is more dedicated to you than you're dedicated to you. God is tirelessly committed to you. God sent people to you that to track you down, like for you to accept him as Lord. God sent people to you, and he didn't get tired of sending person after person. Think about how many people had to talk to you about Jesus before you accepted Jesus as Lord, before you made him the Lord of your life, before you repented of sin and you were born again. So many people had to talk to me and God was tirelessly committed because God is committed. God is a good God. Now there's some people that still will reject even after all of God's pursuits. There's some people that will reject Jesus, but we're not those people. We're, we're people that are that are committed to God. We're submitted unto him. We're born again. We've accepted Jesus as Lord. We declare that Jesus is Lord over our households, over our families and over this planet. And we are committed to representing Jesus on this planet. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. And we are walking with God. We know God is walking with us. And every promise that God has spoken over us shall come to pass while we're in the land of the living. Why? Because God is faithful. So that said, uh, let's get into what I want to share with you this morning. Yesterday, when I was in the message yesterday, I had three things that I wanted to share. I only got to two of them because, you know, God just gave me so much stuff. But the third point that I wrote down is going to lead to the title of today's message. The third point that I wrote down that I never got to that I'm going to deal with today, I wrote this down yesterday. When you set your faith in agreement with God and you put pressure on heaven to manifest what God has promised, then God is glorified on the earth. I just wrote that down, but I didn't have time to like flesh it out, right? Because I had so much other stuff from the first two points. So today I'm going to flesh that out. I'm going to flesh out that thought and I'm going to share some things with you. The title of today's message is living on earth as it is in heaven. Our goal is to live on earth as it is in heaven. So what does this mean for you today? I have uh, three things. I actually had a lot more to share, but I, I, you know, I have to stop at some point. But I have three things to share with you on this morning. As I get into these three things, I want you to open up your heart to receive what God is saying. You ready? Three things. Number one, here we go. Jesus lived his life. I love looking at Jesus as our example because Jesus is our example. So Jesus lived his life in sync with heaven. And he expects us to do the same. Think about it. When Jesus was on the earth, he was on the earth in sync with heaven. He said, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I see my father do. That's John 5 and 19. Jesus said, I came down from heaven to do what God wants, not what I want. That's John 6 and 38. Jesus said uh, in what well, John 5 and 19 and John 5 and 30, he said the same thing. I'm only saying what I hear and doing what I see. In John 12 and 49, Jesus said, I don't speak on my own authority. The father who sent me, he's the one who commands me what to say and how to say it. Therefore, he has to back up the words because the reason why my words have power is because my words are not coming from me. My words are coming from my father. The reason why my, my words have power on the earth is because my words are coming from heaven. See, Jesus's authority was derived from his submission. Listen, your authority is derived from your submission. Like even like the, the Roman centurion, remember when Jesus had a conversation with the, with the Roman centurion, he says, I'm a man in authority because I'm under authority and your authority is always derived from your submission. So since you're submitted to God, submitted to him, you're dying to self, you're yielding to him. And if you're doing only what the father's leading you to do, then you will operate in divine authority because your authority comes from your submission. Jesus only said what the father told him to say. He only did what the father led him to do. So heaven had to back up everything that Jesus said because he was a human conduit of the divine. He wasn't performing his own will. There was no selfishness in Jesus. There was zero selfishness in Jesus. And because he was performing the will of the father, he was submitted to the father. Then the father had to back up everything Jesus was saying because what Jesus was saying came from the father, right? You get it? So living in sync with heaven is the goal. You and I, we're born again, and we're supposed to be a human conduit of the divine. We're living in two places. Now, Jesus understood this, but a lot of believers don't understand this. 
Jesus was living in two places, in two realms at the same time. So he was living in the heaven or the spirit realm and in the earth realm or the natural realm at the same time. And then because he understood that he was living in two places or two realms at the same time, he was able to bring the spirit realm into the natural realm. And so he was able to manifest heaven on earth because he understood that his job was to bring both worlds together, to bring both realms together. So he was like, okay, I will walk. Jesus will walk into a situation in the natural. This person is sick. In heaven, there's no sickness. Oh, snap, what are we going to do? I'm going to bring heaven to the earth. Bam, he would manifest heaven on earth. And so, so yeah, you walk into this, when you understand this and you're operating in two realms at the same time, you can walk into any every, any meeting, conversation, and activity, and it's like, oh, snap, in the natural, they don't have an answer. In heaven, there's unlimited wisdom. So, Father, give me the answer from heaven. You get wisdom, and now you're saying stuff that you need to write down because you never heard it before, because you're living in two realms at the same time. This is how we're supposed to live. In order to manifest heaven on earth, you have to open up your heart to become a conduit of heaven on this planet. Jesus became that conduit because he was submitted to the Father. He completely submitted to the Father. Jesus got up every morning and he got his orders from headquarters. And so the disciples were like, oh my God, they were there. The disciples were there when Jesus, you know, fed 5,000 with with a two-piece fish dinner. The disciples were there when Jesus walked on water. The disciples were there when when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus popped up like a mummy. He was still wrapped wrapped up in that dead stuff. And he said, loose that man and let him go. The, The disciples were there and the disciples never said, teach us how to multiply fishes and loaves. Teach us how to raise the dead. Teach us. No, no, no. The disciples People say, man, there's one thing that we need you to teach us. Teach us how to pray. Because I don't know what you're doing, but in the morning you go off by yourself, you spend time with the Father, and when you come back after that time of prayer, you know what to do for the day. You get your orders from headquarters, and so so you get a download from heaven, and so so we need to know how to do that. We, Lord, teach us to pray. I need to be able to hear from God. I need to be able to hear from heaven. I need to be able to hear what you're saying. I need to, I need to live like Jesus, where, where he was not moved by what he was facing on the outside. He was only moved by what he was hearing on the inside, and you and I, 1 John 4 and 17, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. We're supposed to live like Jesus. Like he lived, that's how we live. And so we are human conduits of the divine. Jesus was the incarnation of God in the flesh, and you and I are the continuation of his incarnation. Say amen to that. So this means that we, like Jesus, Jesus didn't get to selfishly represent his agenda on this planet. Jesus selflessly represented the Father's agenda on this planet. And that's how we're supposed to live. See, once you're born again, look at me. Once you're born again, your life is not about you. Once you're born again, I want to be clear about this. I was having a conversation with several people yesterday about this. My life is not about me. I, I like, like you know, there's things sometimes I get frustrated with. Hey, I don't want to do this anymore. Or I, even like the whole thing, I, I gave the testimony about this house. I didn't even want to move. I, I, it was so frustrating looking for a house and it spent months and, and it was God was trying to get me to expand my capacity to believe him because at first I didn't want this kind of house. And so, so I was like, mm, I don't know. But but along the way, I kept asking God, God, and then the kids already had started school, and I was like, man, I don't want to do all this, but I was like, God, do you want me to move or not? And he was like, yeah, you move, and I was like, all right, well, that's it. I mean, obviously, God wants us to move. Like, like once you're born again, your life is not about you. Like, oh, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't feel like doing this. I want to shut down this business. Did God tell you to shut it down? Hey, I want to leave this job. Did God tell you to leave this job? Hey, I want to move to another state. Did God? I mean, like, okay, cool. Like, if you big, bad, and bold, and you could just do your own thing, and, and like, go ahead. But remember, if it's God's will, it's God's will. If it's your will, it's your bill. So if you make your own decisions, then you're going to have to pay for it. You're going to have to deal with the repercussions of it. But when you're doing what the Father is telling you to do, then, then you can could, you could remind God, hold on, hold on, hold on for a minute, God. I was minding my own business when you told me to do this. And now this is not working out right. And God be like, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because God is leading you to do it. And so, so you are born again. Once you're born again, your life is not about you. You're supposed to do whatever the Father already planned for you to do. And so your job, your life then becomes a life of discovery and, and revelation. And it's like, oh God, now I'm, I, I'm actually, I'm not asking God, I'm not coming up with something and asking God to give it to me because I want it. No, I'm only asking for the things that I believe God already planned. I only want what God wants. I only want what God planned. I don't want anything else. My life is all about him. That's how we're supposed to live. Say amen to that. 
All right, number two. Number two, God gives us his spirit so that we can live in sync with him and his purposes. This is the question I get all the time. Well, Rick, you keep saying that, but how do I hear from God? You keep saying that, but how do I know that these thoughts that I get is me and not God and not Satan? Because I've, I've told you that you get thoughts from you, from God, and from Satan. And you got to be able to discern you know, where the thoughts came from, which thoughts to receive and which thoughts to reject. And people say, well, how do I know? At the end of the day, I've done teaching on this, but it simply boils down to this you are going to know the voice of anybody you spend time with. So you're going to have to spend time with the Holy Spirit. You have to spend time with the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to maybe fast. You're going to have to turn the TV off. You're going to have to spend some time with the Holy Spirit. That's it. It really comes down to that. You have to spend time with the Holy Spirit so you can get to know him, so you can know when he's leading you to do something, so you can discern his voice. Because God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Once, Let me explain it this way. Once you're born again, the Holy Spirit is in you, and God is a spirit. So now you get to communicate with God spirit to spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is your connection to the Father, spirit to spirit. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible says, No eye has seen, neither has ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good things that God has prepared for them that love him, right? And then people be like, ooh, you see? The ways of God are past finding out. You can't know the things of God. Yeah, but you didn't keep reading. That was verse 9. Verse 10 says, but God has revealed these things to us by his spirit. Come on, don't get spooky. I mean, God, you're born again. I mean, once you're born again, God, yes, God reveals these things to us by his spirit. The Bible says, for the spirit searches even the deep secrets of God. And so no one can know, says no one can know the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man be in him. So, so you can't know my thoughts you, because my spirit is not in you. But if I had a way to put my spirit in you and my spirit would be in you and in me at the same time, then you could know what I'm thinking. And you, you would have thoughts that come from you and you would have thoughts that come from me. And so, so you would know what you're thinking. You would know what I'm thinking. I can't do that because I can't put my spirit in you, but God can. And God gave us his spirit. First Corinthians chapter two, read verses nine, 10, 11, and 12 says, God gave us his spirit so we can know, so we can know what he's thinking. So we can know the things that God has prepared for us so that we can know that he already made plans for us from the foundations of the world. And how do we discover those things? Through God's spirit. God gave us his spirit so that we can know. So God reveals to us by his spirit the things that were prepared for us, but concealed from us. And so, so now I'm, I'm getting, oh, God is revealing to me what was prepared for me, but concealed from me. And now that I get to know these things, now I have to make a decision. Once God reveals it to me, now am I going to pursue those things or am I going to pursue whatever I want? Am I still going to be selfish or am I going to die to self and pursue what God is revealing to me. We need God's spirit so we can know. Jesus was walking around in the earth with the Holy Spirit on the inside of him, but the Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out on, on men yet, right? This is the day of Pentecost had not come. And so in John 3 and 3, Jesus said, listen, this is why no, no human can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. The word born again there in the text is a Greek word, anathen, which means born from above. He was like, you know, th here's the problem. The problem is that I'm operating in a whole nother realm because I'm in sync with heaven. You guys are in sync with the earth. And no, I'm seeing a kingdom that you can't see yet because you don't have the Holy Ghost. But he says, nobody can see the kingdom unless you're born from above. I'm born from above. You guys are not born from above yet. This is why in John 8 and 22, Jesus said, you people are from down here, from below. I'm from above. <laughs> you belong to this world. I don't belong to this world. He said, I'm in this world, but I don't belong this, to this world because I've been born from above. And so once I'm born from above, now I have God's spirit. Now I can see from above. I can see the kingdom. I can receive things from the kingdom. But now there are people that are living as mere humans. I'm not living as a mere human. I have God, God's spirit inside of me and God's spirit is communicating to me spirit to spirit, the things from above. And I'm getting input from the things from beneath, from my flesh. Let me explain that in my third point. As I close, last point for today, number three, you can be born again and still live as a mere human. Now I'm teaching, I know I'm talking fast and I'm saying a lot, and this is a message you might need to listen to again, but what I'm about to say is really important. You can be born again and live, live like a mere human. Let me explain. Once again, when Jesus was on the planet, he was living in two realms at the same time. If you're born again, then you have a spirit and your redeemed spirit. Your spirit is saved. Your redeemed spirit is connected to the Father. God's spirit bears connects to your spirit and bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. So your redeemed spirit is communicating with the Father, spirit to spirit. But at the same time, your spirit and your soul live in this body. And this body is an earth suit. 
And this body communicates to this world, to the earth, through five physical senses. So this puts you in a position, to, like Jesus, to live in two realms at the same time. So the input that you get in the natural, right? The input that you're getting in the natural, five physical senses, makes sense because you can validate it with your senses, right? So things from this world make sense because it's something you can validate with your senses. But the input that you get from the Holy Spirit often doesn't make sense because God is spiritual, not sensual. So now you got to decide between the input that the Holy Spirit is giving you, which doesn't make sense, that you cannot validate with your senses, right? So you have no sense realm evidence to support it, and the input that this world is giving to you. So the Holy Spirit gives you a report, but then you get a report from the doctor <laughs> in the natural or, or a lawyer or the school or the bank. And so now whose report are you going to believe? You're getting input in the spirit. You're getting input in the natural. In the natural, you, this makes sense because you can validate it with your senses. But you know, you can see it. You can log into the bank account. You can see that stuff. Over here, God is giving you stuff that doesn't make sense. So believers who have the faith to choose God's spirit over the natural are believers that live by faith. So the life of faith is I'm going to choose whatever the Holy Spirit is leading me to do, even when it doesn't make sense, even when I have no sense from evidence to support it. But there are some people, honestly, who just feel more comfortable sticking to the things they can see. <laughs> there, there are people, you can be born again. Look at me. Let me be very clear. You can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you could be like, yeah, but I'd rather just you know, I don't want to sound crazy. So I'll just kind of, I feel more comfortable just, you know, living like everybody else. And so, so, so now you're born again, but you only do the things that you can validate with your senses. You're born again and you're only doing things that you can like, you know, make sense because you don't want to be nonsensical. So now you're born again and you're, you're doing only things that, that are rational. <laughs> and so, so you're living like a mere human. And the Bible says that you are carnal. You are carnally minded because you're born from above, but you're not living like it. You're born from above, but you, you don't have the courage to live like it. Because when, when God leads you to do something, it will be at the risk of looking foolish. God leads you to do something when you don't have any sense realm evidence to support it. Matter of fact, you might have a bunch of self sense realm evidence that goes against it. And God wants you to do it anyway, even when it doesn't make sense. And even when people around you think you're crazy, God wants you to do it anyway. Why? Because it's the life of faith. But some people are like, mm, I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. I'll just go to church and do my little church thing and say I went to church, but I ain't trying to do all that. You know, I ain't trying to do all that. So now you're born again, but you're living like a mere human and heaven cannot be manifested on the earth through your life because you don't have the audacity or the courage to live by faith. Right? I'm trying to make this as simple, as plain as possible. I'm building my case, so I'm going to stop here. I got more to say about this tomorrow. And so Tomorrow, I'm going to deal with the fact that there are humans that deal with the pressures of this life. They're all stressed out. You know why? Because they're, li they're born again, but they they're not living from above. They're living like mere men. And so as a mere man, yeah, you're going to be stressed out. You're taking on the pressures of this world. I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you, This is a message you might need to listen to again. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for leading me to level up in this season. I level up by embracing who I am. I am born again. This means I'm born from above. I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. I set my focus and attention on heaven. I receive my orders from my heavenly headquarters every day. I am naturally supernatural. You communicate with me, Father. Spirit to spirit, I receive what you say and what you lead me to do. I then launch out in faith to perform it, even when I have no sense realm evidence to support it. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what you say. I live by faith, not by sight, which is why I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word, so please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting my notes, these are notes you want. 
right? You get the notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. Go into the chat. Leave me some comments in the chat right now if this message was a blessing to you, and then share this message on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. You're born again. Live like it. Walk by faith and not by sight. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.